And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to look at additive rhythms. Um, so I like to choose a mallet type sound or something or something like that for this. Um, so I'm going. What am I going to do? Over on the left here, remember these are your categories. So if you choose instruments, and then these are the individual instruments in live. In and of themselves, they're not that interesting to start with. But if you hit the disclosure triangle, there's a bunch of presets. Um, so in operator, um, which is an FM synth, there is a bunch of mallet type sounds. You hit the mallets disclosure triangle. That one might be quite good. That's Kuanu percussion. All right, so I'm just going to drag that onto track one. Now, what I'm going to do in order to create these additive rhythms is it's based on the creation of very small clips, or if we if we use the terminology of additive rhythms, cells. We're creating clips in live, but we can refer to them as cells. We can use the terminology of additive rhythms. I'm going to do this in eighth notes. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, one clip which is two eighth notes long. Now remember, if you're looking for quarter notes in the grid, you're looking for numbers with either whole numbers, so ones and twos, or numbers with one decimal place. We've said this quite a bit, haven't we? So one, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. So if you're looking for eighth notes, you need to go even further in. Okay, so here's an eighth note line. Remember, when you see these three numbers one after another in live, bars, beats, sixteenth notes. Yeah. Now all of that is just to say that if you want to create a clip that lasts for two eighth notes, you can make a selection between a whole number and the next number which has one decimal place, or between two numbers which have two sorry, one decimal place. Make a selection, command, shift, and M to create a MIDI clip. Like that. It's probably worth writing that one down. Command shift and M, create a MIDI clip. Now I'm going to call this cell A and I can rename the clip just by selecting it, pressing Command and R, Control and R for you guys. Just typing in A, like so. My next clip is going to be a clip of three eighth notes. So I'm going to make a selection again, but it's going to be one and a half times what that original selection is for A. So three eighth notes. Command Shift and M or Control Shift and M for you guys to create a MIDI clip. If you don't want to bother with the um, shortcut, you could make the selection and then right click and then insert MIDI clip there. Or you can do it from the Create menu as well. Insert MIDI clip. All right, this is going to be cell B. So Command and R to rename, capital B in there, and also I'm going to give it a different color. So we've got two clips or two cells which have slightly different length, different color and different names. All right, in A I'm going to put two eighth notes. So if I right click, change my grid resolution to eighth notes. I'm just going to use C3 for this to keep it simple. I'm going to put two eighth notes in, but this is a crucial part of it. They need to have different velocities. So the, f the first note I'm going to put up to maximum velocity. Now I'm just mousing over the note, holding command and clicking and dragging up and down. It will be control for you guys on a PC. Yeah. So once the cursor is, whether you're using pencil tool or the cursor, once the cursor is over top of the note, press control, you'll see this draw bar appear. You'll also see, oops a daisy, the velocity value appear up at the top there. I can't point to it with my cursor because it disappears. See the number at the top there? Yeah, one, two, seven. If I click and drag, see the number decreasing? It's up there, so that gives you velocity value. I'm going to put that up to maximum, and that one I'm just going to leave where it is. It sounds like that. I need to turn the metronome off. Right, very good. Now I'm going to put three eighth notes in cell B. Right click, change to an eighth note grid. I'm going to use my pencil tool for this. C3 again and all of the velocities. The velocities can be anything you want, it's totally up to you. But again, I'm going to put the first one up to maximum, I'm going to bring the second one down quite a bit, and the third one's going to be slightly more. And it sounds like that. OK, 
Okay, so if I make a selection across cell A and B, can anyone remember how to move the loop brace really quickly? Command L, very good, or Control L for you guys on a PC. So we can just listen to those two looping round and round. Quick question, 10 points for anyone who can tell me, if we just use those two cells together as a musical phrase, which time signature are we working in? Very close. There's five of them, but what, what were the, five, eight, yeah. There's five of them, one, two, three, four, five, but remember we were using eighth notes. Yeah. So it would be, if that was our musical phrase and we repeated that over and over again, if I press Command and D a few times, and extend that selection. In fact, let's do it one more time. So we've got, hang on a second, that went wrong. I did something wrong there. What I want is four iterations of that loop. All right, so that's where we're going with this. But for starters, we just need to create cell A and cell B. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave cell A and cell B on the top track. Now, you guys know that I like to leave things on the top track so I can always come back to them. So I'm going to leave cell A and cell B like so. I'm going to duplicate the track, so purely just so I can quickly have the same instrument on the track below. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of track three because I don't need it now. And I'm going to delete cell A and B from there. So what I've got is track one with uh, my original cell A and cell B and I've got track two with the same instrument on. I'm just going to deactivate track one so I no longer hear it when I press play. So now what I want to do is create combinations of cells. And the combinations come from this document, which is the task document, which is on Canvas for you guys to refer to in a bit. But it's this table, it's taken from uh, Michael Hewitt's book, Music Theory for Computer Musicians, which I've recommended to you guys all year. And we've got a bunch of different combinations. A, 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 B, A, B, A, B, A, 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 B, B, etc, etc, etc. So it's lots of different combinations, but purely just based on two cells. So I'm just going to pick one of the, in fact, Bradley, can you just pick one of these at random for me, please? B, B, B. B, B, B. Right, great. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. You guys are going to put all of these together, but for quickness, I'm just going to do one. All right, so B, B, B. So I'm going to select B, Control and C to copy, and then just paste it in three times. There it is. So this is the combination that I'm going to work with. Now, if you don't mind, Bradley, I'm just going to switch that up a little bit. I'm going to put an A in the middle there, so I'm going to make this B A B. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to make it B A A. Or bar. Right. So you guys are going to put all of these together and then decide which one you like the most. But I'm just going to work with this one for now. Okay, so. And take this, copy it, and paste it into the start of bar two. Now then, we've got a cell of three quavers, a cell of two quavers, and a cell of two quavers. How many quavers altogether? Seven. Seven, yeah. So if we take this as its own musical phrase, what time signature are we working in? Seven, eight, yeah, because there's seven notes, and they're all quavers. So we're working in seven, eight. Now we can put a time signature change in Ableton Live. Remember, by right-clicking up at the top, insert time signature change, I'm going to change this to 7-8. Now that I've changed that to 7-8, notice that the phrase ends where the next bar begins, which is exactly what we want. Yeah. Okay, so now we can compose a track in 7-8. If we want, and we can take that as our original phrase. I can I'm just pressing Control and D to duplicate that phrase as many times as we want. We could Use that, use that as the start of a composition in 7-8. And we've, and we've created that just by putting a few random cells together and said, right, I'm going to work in 7-8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
that's pretty cool. But we can make it a little bit more interesting if we do the following thing. So I should be able to, I think this is still in the clipboard yet, so I should be able to paste this to a new bar. So here's our phrase, which is in 7-8. Now that's pretty cool, but what I want to do is I want to contrast that 7-8 phrase with something that's in a different time signature. And I'm going to pick the simplest time signature that we all know, which is what, actually. Yeah, brilliant, 4-4. So I'm going to put another time signature change in here to 4-4. So we've got our 7-8 phrase. Here it is. Yeah. and But now we're working in a 4-4 grid. I'm going to select the entire phrase just by clicking and dragging and making a selection, and I'm going to duplicate the phrase until it ends on the end of a bar, like so. Duplicate, 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 keep going until, at some point, currently unknown to me, it will end right on the end, or on the end and the start of a bar. There we go. So that's at the end of bar 18 and the start of bar 19. All right, so I had to duplicate that phrase. What was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Yeah, so eight iterations. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars of four, four. We've got seven bars of four, four, but that, that phrase loops eight times. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add another MIDI track. Anyone remember how to do that? T. Control Shift T. Control Shift M was to create the MIDI clip. Control Shift T, yep, creates a new MIDI track. Anyone guess where I'm going with this? All right, really simple. I'm just going to put a 4 4 kick in. So, I said before that impulse is the quickest and easiest drum instrument to use. Bunch of different kits. I'm just going to use the 606. Click it and drag it to that new MIDI track. Okay. And I want to create a 4 4 clip. So Command Shift M to create that clip. Double click on it. And if I right click and change the quarter notes, I just want to put a 4 4 kick in here. And to make sure that it sounds 4 4, I'm going to increase the velocity of that first note. Let's just solo the track. Put the loop brace here for a second. Yeah? Sounds like 4 4. Very good. All right. Extend the loop brace out again. Select this clip. Duplicate it until it's that long. All right. Let's have a listen to them both together. Everyone's dancing because it sounds good, yeah? And the reason that it sounds subjectively good is what? Why does that sound interesting? Because it's not just 4-4, it's a combination. Yeah, it's a combination. So what we're actually working with here is polyrhythm. We start with additive rhythm, and that was the simplest thing in the world, wasn't it? I just said, right, one, note's, uh, one cell's got two notes in it, the other cell's got three notes in it. Those numbers are completely arbitrary. You could pick any number you want. And I chose quavers. That was completely arbitrary as well. I created those two cells, and then because I had a list of combinations, put all the combinations together, pick one, and then it's just a few technical things, a few time signature things and some duplication, and then you've got something that sounds cool. Because we've combined the 7-8 clip, or the 7-8 phrase, with 4-4 four four underneath it. I've only chosen 4-4 four four for simplicity, that could be any time signature you want. 